sikata ripokoti kashia rabando roko ribando rekate adam enjoy joy in the presence of the almighty god come on we are in the presence of god how do i know that jesus says that his spirit will not leave us neither forsake us what is wrong with us children of god that we walk around with a sour face and a sour heart and a sour countenance as if our god has forsaken us yes we will go through matters and we will go through situations but don't you also know that going through those issues allow you to partake in jesus christ no matter what i am going through in life no matter what you are going through in life no matter what situation you find yourself in life the lord will never leave you he will never forsake you so i rebuke distress i rebuke despondency i rebuke those things tonight in the mighty name of jesus we have victory in christ we are victorious in jesus my god we are victorious nothing by any means shall overcome you nothing by any means shall stop you nothing by any means shall cause you to falter to find yourself in a place where you cannot have strength no 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 the joy of the lord is your strength when you are weak then he is strong come on rise out of the mental doldrum that the enemy wants to put you in yes we could do with some change we could do with some answers we could do with some solution we could do with some capital injection and for some financial blessing my god we could do with certain things in our life right now but until then i will not allow my situation to destroy me you must not allow your situation to destroy you don't allow your situation to trample you come on your next assignment is dependent on your victory in this matter now your next assignment is dependent on your victory in this situation now your promotion is dependent on how you handle this matter oh jesus christ i said your promotion is dependent on how you handle this matter you might not have the power to change it but listen how you carry yourself in it is very important how you carry yourself in it is very important your mindset is important listen your mindset is very very important in how you will handle the situation oh jesus my god my god my god Oh glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel like taking you to the book of Deuteronomy tonight because somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord. Somebody needs to be encouraged. I feel somebody needs to be encouraged tonight so that you understand that there are some things that listen you have to guard yourself against you have to guard yourself against some issues you have to guard yourself against some problems you have to guard yourself against some cycles of the enemy don't allow the enemy to defeat you don't allow what people say to affect affect your outlook on on what god has said to you my god don't allow my god the situation before you to be a deterrent to your destiny and to your prophecy this is the time when you have to rise up and believe what god has said to you mighty god of daniel this is the time when you have to believe what god has said to you because there are people who will come your way on assignment from the devil's hell 
on assignment from the devil's bosom to try and stop you from being what God wants you to be, from becoming what God wants you to become, from achieving what God wants you to achieve. Mighty God of Daniel, do not let the enemy dissuade you. My God, my God, my God, I, I, I'm going to talk to you tonight from the book of Deuteronomy chapter one. The Bible says, these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazeroth and Dizahab. Now there are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Ser unto Kadesh Barnea. Hear me. It, it could have taken the children of Israel 11 days, 11 days to, to get into Kadesh Barnea, to get into Canaan. It could have taken them 11 days. Listen, there are some of you, the reason why you are, your matter is prolonged is not because God wanted it to be prolonged. Hear me very well. It is not that God wanted you to go through a long tunnel and a long journey. It is not because God wanted you to go through a very deep, dark situation before you get to where he wanted you to get to. Left to God, you would have gotten there the very day that he spoke the word. But you see, there are some of us, my God, there are some of us, we love to listen what others are saying instead of hearing what God is saying to us as individuals. We love to listen what other people are saying rather than listening to what God is saying to us as individuals. You see, it may have taken somebody else 40 years to get where they are today. It might have taken somebody else 12 years to get where they are today. It might have taken somebody else 11 years, five years to get where they are today. But does that mean that it must take me the same time it took them? Come on, somebody. Does it mean that it must take me the same 40 years or the same 12 years or the same 13 years or the same 15 years to get where they have gotten to? Come on, somebody. The answer is absolutely no. It is time for us to shut our ears against the dissuading of the enemy. There are those who purport to have faith. There are those who present themselves as if they are stalwarts of the spirit, as if they are mighty warriors of the supernatural realm. But when you check it, when the battle comes, when they see the battle ahead, when they see what they have to do ahead, when they see what is ahead, when they see mighty God, their hearts melt inside of them. It is time to stop listening to what other people have to say and hear what God is saying to you on the matter. Yes, the case might be going in and uh, not in your favor, but my God, is that what the Lord is saying on the situation? The issue might be going down a wrong a, a road that you, my God, did not plan for, but can it be stopped? Can the matter be intercepted? You see, we, we have to come out, my God, of the despondency of others. Too long we have been living in the atmospheres of others. We have been living, my God, in the mindsets of others. We have been living in the, in, in the way others think and in the way others perceive life and in the way others think about life. It is time for me to hear God for myself. It is time for you to hear God for yourself on your life, on your issue, on your matter, so that the time frame between now and the fulfillment of what God wants to do in your 
your life will not be prolonged. Tonight is the night when we break the cycles of prolonged defeat, prolonged issues, prolonged stagnancy, prolonged delays, prolonged setbacks. My God, tonight is the night when everything that is being prolonged in my life because of wrong alignments, wrong attachments, wrong faith must be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. If the ways of man brings destruction, then my God, I want the way that God has prepared for me. Glory be to God. There is a path that God has set for you. There is a pathway that God wants for you. There is a road that God wants you to take. And if you allow him to take you on that road, it will not take you 11 years and 15 years and 40 years. My God, it wouldn't even take you 10 days by the grace of the living God. Because I know God can accelerate some things in our life. My God. Verse 3 of Deuteronomy 1 said that it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke unto the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. Now, now I want you to see something, brethren. The Bible put in a parenthesis in verse 2. For you to understand that it could have taken 11 days to get from one point to the next point. The, the distance between now and their destiny, between their now and their appointed place of provision was only 11 days. Only 11 days. But it came to pass that in the 40th year, this is when Moses is now speaking to them. When he could have spoken to them during the 11 day period. The Bible said after he had slain Sion, king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon and Og, king of Bashan, which dwelt at Astoreth in Edre, on the side of Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to declare the law, saying, The Lord our God spoke unto us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. I'm here to say to somebody, You have dwelt long enough on this mountain you have dwelt long enough at this place that you are at oh jesus is somebody hearing what i'm saying tonight is somebody understanding what i'm saying to you tonight you have dwelt long enough in the position in the place in the situation that you are in. You have dwelt long enough. Long enough. How long do you intend to go around the mulberry bush? How long do you intend to keep going around the same situation over and over and over and over again? How long do you intend to keep circling the issue before dealing with it? How long do you intend to keep going around in circles? God never created us. To go around in circles. Mm -mm. If he wanted us to go around in circles, he would have created us with four wheels that can only turn in one direction. But he created us with two feet. Two feet that must go forward. We must not go around in circles anymore. There are some cycles in our life 
that must now be broken. There are some cycles in our life that must come to an end. You have dwelled long enough in this mountain, at this mountain, at this hill. You have dwelt long enough at this problem. This situation has outlived its usefulness. This atmosphere has outlived its usefulness in your life. It is no longer of benefit to you. It can no longer help you. The place that you are at is no longer conducive to your breakthrough, to your miracle. As long as you stay in this current mindset, you will not achieve what God wants you to achieve. As long as you sit there and be pitiful about your situation, you will not move an inch. As long as you sit there and cry and mourn about who did what and when it happened and how it happened, you will not move from that situation. You see, brethren, memories are good. As long as you use the memories as points of teaching for your progress. History is good as long as you learn from it. But when you live in the history, in the memory of your past, you cannot move forward. There is no going forward until your mind changes. There is no moving forward with anything until your mind aligns to moving forward. The greatest hindrance some of you have is your own self, your own mind. You are sitting there hoping that somebody will address your past. Nobody is going to address your past. Nobody is going to address your issues. They are gone. Nobody can go back into it and revisit it. The only thing you can do is renew your mind and move forward. Get up from the place that you are at. Get up from this mountain that you are at and move forward. You have dwelt long enough at this place. Yes, they fired you. Yes, it was one of your co-workers that, that told some lie or concoct some situation to get you fired. Yes, it has happened. It is done. But you cannot live in the spiritual atmosphere of it. Yes, they have kicked you out and they have spoken bad things about you. But you cannot live in the spiritual atmosphere of it. While they are moving forward with their lives, you are stuck in the atmosphere of defeat that they created for you. Stop living in the atmospheres that evil men and women have created for your life. Oh my God. It is time for you to come out of the atmospheres that others have created because of their own failures. Why should I fail? Because somebody failed at what I'm doing, then it means that I have to fail. God forbid. Why should I spend the same amount of time you spend to achieve certain things? My path is not your path. Your path is not my path. And because you took 40 years, it doesn't mean I'm going to take 40 years. My God, I'm going to take four days. My God, I'm going to take four minutes. You see, there are, there are some of us 
We have truly allowed the voice of others to dictate our movement. We have allowed the, 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 the failures of others, the doubt of others to dictate how we move. We have allowed the fear of others to cripple us. Many of the things that we are dealing with in life is not because of our action. It is because we have decided to live in the atmospheres of other men's fears and failures. And because we don't trust that God will honor our own faith, we live in the doubt of others. You have dwelt at this mountain long enough. You have dwelt at this mountain long enough. You have stayed at this place of despondency long enough. The Bible said in verse number seven, it said, turn you. Come on, turn. Come on, somebody need to get up from off their bed, get up from off their chair and make a turn right now. This is a prophetic action you are performing right now. The, your, your turning right now shall turn your situation around. Even as you are turning now, come on, come on somebody, turn. I want you to turn. As you are turning now, your matter shall be turned around for your good. The Bible said, turn. And take your journey and go to the mountain of the Amorites. And, the, and to all the places nigh thereunto in the plain, in the hills, in the vale, in the south and by the seaside. To the land of the Canaanites and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the great, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. My God, somebody need to hear what the Lord is saying to you tonight. Behold, I have set the land before you. Land represents wealth. Land represents prosperity. Land represents increase. Land represents every good thing that God has to offer you. Behold, I have set the land before you. My God, somebody need to hear what I'm saying to you by the spirit of the Lord tonight. Behold, I have set glory be to God. It is not man who has set it. My God, it is not an angel who has set it. My God, it is the Lord God himself who has set it before you. You have been contemplating, should I go and apply to do the next uh, 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 degree? Should I apply for this job? Should I go and open the business? Should I take the step and, and move forward in my ministry? Should I, should I, should I, should I, should I? Stop being at the should I zone and go, 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 go and possess the land that is before you. I have set before you the land. My God, go in and possess the land. The Lord is talking to somebody tonight. There is a word that has come for you tonight. Mighty God, I want you to understand something that before God releases a word, the matter is already done in the spirit. When you get the word, it is for you. It is not for God. God already decided on the matter before he spoke. I want you to understand that. When you get the word, it is for you to align with God, God has already decided and what God has already done. I want you to hear me tonight. The land is before you. Your blessing is before you. Your wealth is before you. Your riches is before you. Your inheritance is before you. Your increase is before you. But you have to get up from where you are and go in and possess. Mighty God, go in, move, take a step, get up, take a leap of faith, get up, come out from under the atmosphere of despondent men, get up, come out from under the atmosphere of the, those who will discourage you, get up, come out from under the shadow of your problem and move forward. It requires your mind to get up. It requires your faith to begin to act. Come on, nothing will happen 
if you do nothing, nothing plus nothing equals absolutely nothing. But if you get up and try something, I guarantee you with the word of the Lord that has gone before you, with the grace of God that is moving with you, my God, God is going to turn your little action into some big results. Glory be to God. He's going to turn your little action into some mighty outcomes. All you need to do is take a step of faith. Get up and turn your face towards the north. Come on, turn your face towards the north. The Bible says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. There are some people who might have said you are not getting any help. There are some people who might have said your file is going into file 13. But my God, no matter what they say, no matter what comes out of their mouth, I'm going to speak my own atmosphere. I'm going to decree my own dictates. I'm going to decree my own on outcomes. I'm going to get up. I'm going to try something. I'm going to take a step and I'm going to see where the spirit of the Lord will move me. My God, my steps may, may, might be little right now, but my God, every step I take shall be enlarged by the spirit. I'm here to tell somebody, get up and try again. Get up and move again. Get up and do again. Get up and go again. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up. If you don't get up, the cycle will continue. If you don't try something, the cycle will be perpetuated. The breaking of the cycle requires you to get up and do something. Take a step, take a leap, make a jump, take a turn, move by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. No matter what the market is saying, no matter what the news is saying, my God, if you follow the news, my God, you will be bruised. If you follow the news, my God Almighty, you will be stuck in a place of fear and panic and anxiety. But mighty God of Daniel, I'm here to give somebody some good news tonight that the Lord says that he has set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give unto them and to their seed after them. My God, my God. Do you have a covenant with God tonight? Has God given you a word? Is there a word over your life? Is there a promise that God has given to you? What is it that God has said to you that you might not have seen fulfilled yet? Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. My God, my God, my God. I said, don't lose hope. The devil wants to destroy your hope. But hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. It might look tough. It might look rough. It might look as if it's not going to happen. It might seem as if you're casting out and you're casting away and you're being pushed aside. Seems as if it is the end. It might not look as if there is any way out right now. But I'm telling you, the more you speak faith, the more you declare faith, the more you release the word of faith out of your mouth, I will guarantee you that your words will not return unto you void, but it shall accomplish what it is sent out to do. Words are spirits, my God, and the more you speak, the more the Lord is going to cause your words to be performed. My God, if you can only just connect with what the Lord is saying to you tonight, if you can only just connect with what the Lord is saying to you by the Spirit even now. Listen to me. God has assigned some angels. He has already dispatched his warring angels ahead of you. My God, the grace of God is there with you. God's word is not going to come to you where his grace cannot sustain you. Hear me, somebody. The Amorites, those of the hill country might be there. The dwellers of the mountains might be 
there, there are those who are occupying the mountains and they have been occupying it for quite some time. But mighty God of Daniel, they might have defeated one, they might have defeated two, they might have defeated three, but my God, they never heard of me. Glory be to God. Mighty God of Daniel, I said they might have defeated one, they might have defeated two, they might have defeated three, but mighty God of Daniel, they never heard of me. Come on, somebody. I said they never heard about me. They have never encountered the likes of me. I said, my God, the dwellers of the mountains, those who seek to destroy those in the valley, those who seek to control, my God, the powers and the, and the gates, mighty God of Daniel, those who operate with principalities and powers might have been there for a long time and they might have defeated one, they might have defeated two, but they might have defeated three. But mighty God, they never heard of me. I am God's secret weapon getting ready to take over the land. I want somebody to hear what I'm saying. I said you are God's secret weapon getting ready to take over the land. Get up from the mountain you are. Get up from under the shadow of death that you are. Take a step, take a turn, take a move. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Move ahead because the grace of God is with you to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. One small step in this natural realm is one giant step in the realms of the spirit. Glory be to God. No matter how small your step is, I want you to keep on moving. Hallelujah. My God. Glory be to God. You see, you have to understand that God wants you to possess what he has said in promise to you. My God. You see, there are some things that can cause you to lose your possession and end up in a situation where you're going around in cycles. My God. You see, the Bible says in verse number 21, I'm skipping some, some verses here. In verse 20, it said, And I said to you, you are come to the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord God give to you. My God. You have come to the mountain of the Amorites. The word Amorite has a meaning of prominence. You have come to the mountain of prominent people. You have come to the place where prominent men and women have been occupying that territory for some time. Is it possible that God can remove those who are occupying places of prominence, albeit not by the Spirit of the Lord, but by some other spirit? Yes, they might have solidified themselves with altars and with idols and with powers. And they might have conquered those who might have come along their way before. But I want you to know this, that when the Lord your God speaks, and says, I have given you their mountain. I have given you their place of prominence. There is nothing they can do to stop you from occupying that place. Hey, my God. I said when the Lord speaks and says, I have given you the mountain of the Amorites, the mountain of those who have been prominent for some time, 
There is absolutely nothing they can do. The children of God must get ready. Because God is going to dispossess some Amorites. So that you can rise into your place of prominence. There is a word. My God. Hey Jesus. There is a word upon you. That God is going to make you great. There is a promise that God has given to you that he is going to make you great. That he is going to lift you up. But how are you going to be lifted up? When demonic rulers, demonic occupiers are standing in the place that you should occupy. You see, God's word to you is God's weapon to you. Makushakata. I said God's word to you is God's weapon to you. And God's weapon, the Bible says they are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. There have been some strongholds that have been standing in your place of greatness. Standing in your place of prominence. And the Lord says it's time to get up. Because I've given you. It's time to get up. Because I have dispossessed them. The Bible says. Behold the Lord thy God. Had set the land before you. Go up and possess it. And the Lord God of thy fathers has said thee unto thee, Fear not, neither be thou discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Discouragement is a spirit. Discouragement is a spirit that affects the hearts of men to cripple their faith, to cripple their hope. Discouragement is a spirit that causes you to be arrested in the prison of your own mind. Oh, Jesus, the devil is wicked. The devil is wicked. Have you ever seen a cow? They tie a cow and they tie him on one little, little um, thing, little stick with one little rope, massive cow, one little rope, one little piece of stick that they tie the cow on. And the cow will not move beyond the length of rope. And you look at it and you say, but this cow can pull out this thing easily. Why is it that this cow is not moving? Because the owner trained the cow to be restrained by that piece of rope. Don't let the devil train your mind to be restrained by the discouragement of others. There are some people, all they have is bad news. Every time you hear them is bad news. Every time you hear them open their mouth is discouragement. Every time they open their mouth is something negative. Enough is enough. What the devil is trying to do is to train your soul, train your mind to be tied to the atmosphere of their defeat. Enough is enough. The strength of the Lord is in me. The might of God is in me. The power of the spirit is in me. I will not be held in the prison of my own doing. I'm not going to be held in a prison of my own doing. The Lord says, don't be discouraged. You came near unto me, every one of you, and said, we will send men before us. Now, watch this, because I want you to see this. That they shall search out, search us out the land and bring us word again by what we must go up and into what cities we shall come. Here is the problem. 
The problem is not that we send men. The problem is not that we send intercessors. The problem is not that we call people to go before us to spy out the land. The problem is that we send the wrong people. That has been the issue that many of you have been dealing with. You have been aligned to the wrong people. The wrong people have been given you advice. The wrong people have been speaking into your spirit. The wrong people have been speaking into your ears. The wrong people have been praying with you. Come on. Twelve men went up. It pleased the congregation to send twelve intercessors into the land. One intercessor for every tribe. My God. But when the intercessors came back, Holy Spirit, when they came back from spying out the land, only two came back with good news. Why is it that some people get ahead and some people are held back? Why is it that some people are able to move forward and some people are stuck? It is because the wrong information came to our ears. And we allowed that wrong information to take root in our heart. Come on. How many of us have allowed wrong information to come into our ears to cripple us? Wrong words, wrong prophecies, wrong encouragements. Because some encouragements are discouragements. There are some people who claim that they are encouraging you, but really and truly what they are doing is discouraging you. There are some people who claim that they are giving you wisdom, but in reality, what they are really doing is, is releasing foolishness into your ears. There are some people who claim that they are praying for you, but in reality, they are praying against you. Oh, Jesus. May God tonight reveal to you wrong company so that you can disassociate yourself from them. Yes. Some of us have gotten wrong teachings. Why is it that some of us are not moving in the power of the Holy Ghost? Because some of us have been taught that the Holy Ghost stopped moving from the days of the apostles. Some of us have never even been taught that there is a Holy Ghost and that there is power of Holy Ghost. Some of us have been taught that the Holy Ghost only belongs to some people. Come on. Tonight is Holy Ghost disconnection. Tonight is the night when we shall disassociate from people who have been feeding us with wrong news. Yes, the land might be filled with the giants. Oh, Jesus have mercy. Let, let, let's go to the Bible. The Bible says in verse 23 of Deuteronomy chapter 1, that the saying pleased me well. And I took 12 men of you, one of a tribe. It pleased the prophet to send 12 intercessors. You see, it, it, there's nothing wrong with intercession. But when you have the wrong people interceding for you, that's where the problem lies. There is nothing wrong with people praying for you. Because these 12 men, they were intercessory spies sent into the land to map out the territory. 
to see where the pillars are, to see where the altars are, to see where the idols are, to see where the strength of the nations lie. And instead of doing their job, they rebelled, they murmured, they became discouraged, and they doubted. Not everybody who claims that they can pray can really pray. Because if you don't have faith when you are praying, your prayer is not going anywhere. The Bible said they turned and went into the mountain and came to the valley of Eshkol and searched it out. You see, they, they had the ability to see. They had the ability to discern. They had the ability to search out the things of the spirit. They had the gift. They were commissioned. They were mantled. But do you know one of the greatest areas of failure in many ministries is their intercessory group? You don't pick people and just put them in the ministry of intercession because you want to put people into intercessory group. You don't just put people in the ministry of intercession because you, you, they tell you that they want to be in intercessory ministry. You don't just put any and anybody in that critical ministry because it is going to make your ministry either succeed or fail. This is a serious matter. This is why I don't joke with, with my intercessors. I will fire them immediately when I see that they are not doing their job. Because I know that intercession will either make you or break you. You have to be careful about the people that you employ to pray for you. You have to be careful about the people that you send into your matter to search it out. Because there are those who will come back with the word of faith and there are those who will come back with the word of doubt. It is not everybody that sees that you should jump with. It is not everybody who, who can hear that you should run and align yourself with. You must have discernment to know those whose hearts are aligned with God and for the purposes of God in your life. Those are the intercessors. Those are the watchmen. Those are the warriors who will get you moving from out of the cycle that the Lord has uh, uh, tells you to get up out of, that the enemy has put you in. So the Bible says they took up the fruit of the land. Yes? And they brought it down. And they brought us word again. My God, these intercessors, they can prophesy. They know how to access the realms. They know how to go into the spirit. They can bring back fruits and they can bring back word. If some of you are word junkies, let me, let me, let me say it again. I say some of you, you are word junkies. Everywhere there's a prophet, you run there. Everywhere you hear there is a prophet, you are gone there. Not because you want to align with the purposes of God, but you're a word junkie. You want a word. You want a word. If you hear somebody pray and they sound good, you want to align yourself with them because you want them to pray for you. Word junkie. So they bring back word and said, it is a good language the Lord doth give it us. Notwithstanding, you would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord. My God, you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, he has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. My God, where is your perspective? You see, the problem was not the camp. Oh, Jesus, let me, let me touch a nerve tonight. The reason why many churches are failing. Yes, I said failing. Mm -hmm. Failing. The reason why many churches are failing. 
The reason why many people are stagnant in their churches is because of the intercessors. Because of those who are bringing back word. Because of, oh my God, Jesus, help me tonight. Because of those who are speaking. You see, they saw the land. They saw what was in the land. But they never believed that they could take it. They never believed that they could take it. If God allows you to see something. If God allows you to access certain realms of information and revelation. If God allows you to go into the enemy's territory undetected and come out with the enemy's secret. What makes you think that God will not give you the power to defeat your enemy? The problem is that many of us, our hearts dwell too much in the past. You see, the camp of Israel was ripe to either go up or go down. It was the word that came from these intercessors that went, that caused them to take 40 years to reach where they're supposed to go. And many of them, in fact, none of them, except two, the Bible said, Joshua and Caleb, reached out of that company into the land of Canaan. If you don't believe that wrong alignment can mash up your destiny, learn some lessons from Deuteronomy chapter one. Wrong alignment can wreck your destiny, especially when our hearts turn away from God. God is not going to give you something. Oh, Jesus, help me tonight. That will not require your involvement and input. Your involvement and input is required. The Lord wants you to participate in the process. He wants you to participate in the process. You see what happened to Israel. After. The, the generation of Joshua. What happened to that generation is that they turned away from God. Why? Because they never participated in the process of acquiring the wealth that they had gotten. There is something about us that when we get things too easy, we lose it easily. We despise it easily. But when you have to put in some effort to achieve what you must achieve, you will treat it differently because you know the value of it. You know the value of it. The camp of Israel was discouraged by 10 men. 10 intercessors discouraged them. They did not want to listen to Joshua and Caleb that they could have taken the land. They didn't want to listen. They didn't want to hear it. What are you putting in your ears, brethren? What are you allowing to enter your ears? Can you do it? Can you achieve it? Can you accomplish it? If God said it, why are you disbelieving it? If God said that this is yours, that this is where I want to take you, that this is my plan for you, why are you disbelieving it? Will a little struggle cause you to turn back? What are you going to turn back to? You have come this far by faith. 
Are you going to turn back now? There is nothing behind you to go back to. The people who kicked you out don't want you again. In fact, if they see your face, they will kill you. What are you going to go back to? The only option you have is to move forward. You can stay in this place and die. And don't accomplish anything. You can sit there and mope and group in your pain and be pitiful. And talk about who did what and when did what and where did what and how did what. Is that an option? You can sit there and call for people to pray for you. And find every prophet you can find to prophesy and prophesy over your life. But if you don't get up and have the spirit of Joshua and Caleb, if you don't get up and allow the prophetic word of the Lord over your life to be activated by your faith, nothing will happen for you. We can prophesy from now till 2050. If you don't get up and take a step, nothing is going to happen for you. Your ministry must not perish at the mountain of discouragement. Your ministry must not perish at the mountain of fear. Your ministry must not perish at the mountain of doubt. Don't allow your life to remain stuck where it is right now. Get up. Take a step. Make a step. My God. The Bible said that when they were in the wilderness, yes, and in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bear thee, as a man doth bear his son in all that they want, in all the way that he went and you came into this place. How have you gotten to where you are? Where you are now, was it your own strength that brought you here? Was it your own power that brought you here? Or was it the grace of God that brought you here? You were carried by the Lord to where you are now. Now you are on the threshold, on the cusp of your breakthrough, on the brink of touching what God has promised you. And you are going to pull back because some stupid person came and told you that there were giants in the land. So what? So what? Some foolish person come and tell you, oh, there is a, 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 a one witchcraft man down there. And every church that comes and every pastor that comes, he kills them. Yeah? But he has never met me. He might have killed 10 or 15 or 20. But me, he ain't killing me. He going to be blood for blood. But I'm not the one dying. You see, you have to strengthen yourself. In the spirit of the Lord. Encourage yourself. Listen to me brethren. Greater is he that is in you. Than he that is in the world. Do you know what the devil is afraid of? A Christian who knows who they are. Uh huh. The devil is not afraid of your prayers. I'm telling you. The witches can pray. The devil is not afraid of your gifts. He's anointed cherub. Mm -hmm. He's not afraid of how much revelation you have. The Bible said he was perfect in wisdom in the day he was created. So he's, he's not scared about your wisdom and about your knowledge. What scares him is that you know who you are. 
And when you come into knowing who you are, my God, you are dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. There are times when Jesus will go to some places and the demons will cry out, Jesus, the son of David, have you come to torment us? Jesus says, shut up. Come out of him. Jesus knows who he is. The devils know who he is. But you see, the problem is that many of us don't know who we are. Many of us don't know. And because we don't know who we are, we get fearful. We become scared. We start trembling. Because we hear one obia man over there, so one voodoo man down there, so one witch down there, so they could have been witch from the womb, and they could have inherited ten generations of 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 juju power, and they could have thrown down as many people as they have thrown down. But I know who I am in Christ. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You have to know who you are in Jesus so that doubt does not fill your mind, so that doubt does not take over your soul, so that doubt does not take over your spirit. They could be in any cult they want to be and using any occult power they want to use. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. By his stripes, the Bible says, I am healed. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony. You better know who you are. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the prophet of the Lord that the word of God says, touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophets no harm. It is not for you to know who I am. It is for me to know who I am. The day I know who I am and begin to step into knowing who I am and begin to walk in, the, in who God has made me to be, I become a dangerous terror to the kingdom of darkness. This is why the enemy wants to discourage you and dissuade you and make you become despondent and hopeless. The intercessors went into the land. They saw what they saw, but they did not retain their identity. They allowed a different spirit to take them over so that when they came back into the camp, instead of giving the word of encouragement, instead of giving the word of hope, instead of giving the word of grace, what did they bring? They brought a word of rebellion, murmuring, complaint, doubt and discouragement to the people and that's the spirit that entered them tonight I want to say to you that the Lord has gone before you God has gone before you there are those who might not have entered into the promise there are those that God has been angry with. Oh my God. There are some leaders that God is angry at. Some prophets that God is angry at. Some pastors that God is angry at. And they are not going to enter into the blessing. They are not going to enter into the revival. They are not going to enter into the next uh, 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 revelation of the Holy Ghost upon the land. Because they have discouraged many. They have caused many to fail and falter. They have destroyed many a camps. With their discouraging words. With their lying prophecies. They have benefited from the land. But their discouragements have, have caused the camp 
not to benefit but to die because they have not believed that God can take them in it. But here is what the Bible says. But Joshua, the son of Nun, would stand before thee. He shall go in. We are the generation that God says will enter into the outpouring of the Spirit of God. We are the generation that will see the power and the glory of God and the might of the Spirit of God in the earth realm. We are that generation of the church. If you believe that with me, I want you to type amen. We are that Joshua generation that is going into Canaan. We will possess the mountains. We will possess the hills. We will possess the valleys. We will possess the rivers. We will possess the coasts. My God, we will possess by the grace of God, we will see power coming out of our ears, our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our hands. My God, we will shine with the brightness of the glory of the living God. We are that generation. My God, the Bible says, encourage him. That's what I've been doing with you since night. I have been encouraging you, strengthening your spirit, releasing strength into your mind so that you can be resolute and courageous in what the Lord is about to do for you. He says, encourage my people for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. I'm here to say to somebody tonight, be encouraged. Be encouraged. I said, be encouraged. I said, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Let your hope return. Let your confidence come back. My God, be motivated, be uplifted. Cheer up. Take heart. My God, feel inspired again. Because you're going to inherit what God says you are going to inherit and possess. Your inheritance is just one step away. The cycle is breaking tonight. The cycle of discouragement, the cycle of delay, the cycle of defeat, the cycle of despondency is being broken tonight because the word of encouragement has gone out into your soul. You're not going to stay here forever. You're not going to stay in this situation for one more day. I said tonight is the night when your situation must change. Oh, glory be to God. God has singled you out to step into your inheritance. Yes, your father might not have stepped into it. Your mother might not have stepped into it. Your grandparents and your great-grandparents might not have stepped into it. But you are going to step into it. You are going to step into your educational inheritance. You are going to step into your financial inheritance. You are going to step into your, iner your ministerial inheritance. You are going to step into your marital inheritance. You are going to step into your inheritance of wealth, of favor, of grace. My God, whatsoever your inheritance is that the Lord has prepared for you, you are going to step into it and you are going to possess it. You are going to acquire it you are going to lay hold of it and nothing and no man is going to stop it from happening you are not going to go around this mountain anymore you are not going to go around the mulberry bush anymore you are not going to go uh dwell under the shadow of discouragement anymore you have dwelt at this mountain long enough now it is time to move forward now it is time to get up and move Move forward. It is time to move forward. My days of dwelling in this position is 
over. Mandeko shatari and tushkata. My days of being in this situation is over. I cut off every discouraging tongue from my life. I cut off right now every hopeless spirit from my heart. I cut off right now every spirit of doubt, my God, from my soul. I cut off every and anything and anyone that is trying to block me from crossing into my Canaan. I cut it off tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I want you to begin to praise God. I want you to begin to worship him, glorify him. The word of the Lord has come to encourage you that the time has come for the cycle to be broken, for every cycle of defeat, every cycle of negativity, Activity. Every cycle of despondency is broken tonight. Cycles of curses are broken tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And the time has come for you to move forward in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and 